Hey there, Around the Layout listeners. With advanced previews of upcoming episodes and monthly giveaways, now's the time to become an operating crew member. For just $3 a month, you'll get an exclusive membership sticker, your name listed on the operating crew roster, and automatic entry into our monthly giveaway drawings. Just as important, your financial support keeps all of our episodes from behind paywalls and free of those annoying car insurance commercials you hear on other podcasts. Joining the operating crew is quick and easy. Head to patreon.com backslash around the layout podcast. And if you missed that, you'll find a link on our website around the layout.com. And thank you for being a listener. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Around the Layout, where model railroaders come to tell their story. My name is Ray Arnott, and it's time, although early in the month, we're going to do a special What's Happening in Model Railroading. And joining me to do that, of course, is the editor of Model Railroad News, Tony Cook. Tony, welcome to the show. Hey, Ray, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's a little early, isn't it? It's like we just talked. You know, it is, but... I, the industry is just the I, I, exact rail and scale trains. Do I need to say any more? And no. this is something that's been brewing for a while. This is a really exciting combination of the two. And I'm so excited that we have, if you remember one of scale trains, the slogans was innovative scale trains. Right. And we have that innovator guy with us today. The man who would be behind that slogan is Shane Wilson. He is someone I've known for, 10, 12 years back to before. We'll talk a little bit about his history, but truly somebody that is moving the hobby forward uh, and doing so much for the hobby. And he's a, he's a great guy. You know, he's been on his road trip too. We're going to talk about that. He packs the dog and the family up in the RV along with his trains and has been out for the last year, year and a half uh, visiting places all, which I don't know how he does that and runs this company too, but somehow, yeah, so exciting. And we're going to be meeting up in person, uh, on July 8th at the spring Creek, uh, open house event. So I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit too. So exciting stuff, but Shane is a fantastic guy. And again, one of the, the leaders and innovators in the hobby. So this is a great guest and we've got great news happening right now. Three major railroad acquisitions in the last couple of years. Number three, CSX Pan Am. Number two, CPKC. And number one, the one everybody is talking about, the exact rail acquisition by Scale Trains. Let's not wait any further. Let's bring in from Scale Trains, Shane Wilson. Shane, welcome to the show. Ray, Tony, thank you so much. Boy, I hope I can live up to that intro. Uh, you were really <laughs> too kind there. And I got to give a lot of credit, guys. I mean, you know, you know, uh, we have an awesome team both here in the U.S. and, and, our, and our factories. So uh, while I'd like to take all that credit, I sure can't. It's, it goes to our people and what they do to, to bring the best model rail products to market that we can do. That is true, Shane, that, you know, Paul Ellis and Mike Hopkin, I work with those guys a lot on prototype things. Drayton, did I tell you? Yeah what Drayton and I are talking about doing. I have not heard this. Well, as we text and message back and forth on various, you know, promote it because Drayton's your social media guy. He is. And I don't, I have no idea how he's way too young for this, but he's a big fan of like eighties music. Oh yeah. And and he was telling me, Oh, I'm going to see, you know, Duran Duran in concert. And I'm like, how do you even know who they are? I said, I was in high school at the time. You? No way. Oh, yeah, I love that. So we're always talking about music as well as trains. And I keep saying, we need to do a show where we talk about old music stuff. He goes, oh, I love that. That's that's my second favorite hobby to trains. I said, me too. Yeah, music and old TV shows and movies. Yeah, same thing. So I'm trying to recruit Drayton to to do a show on talking 80s music. (laughs) Oh, he loves Duran Duran and... uh You'll have to have him do his impressions for you uh, of, of the band. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. That is wild. Uh, you know, to start off, scale trains, I was trying to think. I remember being at your event, and at first I was thinking it was the Grand Rapids NMRA show, but it was the night before the opening of Train Fest. What year mm-hmm. that you had that event and launched scale trains? That was uh, Friday the 13th. 
Oh. That was November of uh, of uh, twenty. Let's see, that'd been twenty fifteen. Wow. Okay, so yeah, about eight eight years ago. And boy, uh, Ray, this know. was this was incredible. They had it at a Mexican restaurant there in the Milwaukee area, as I recall. He no had the, the the gas turbine models mm-hmm. in that case, you know, to see the first museum quality model and all. It was just uh, truly for somebody like me that's into hobby history and loves following what's happening in model railroading. That night was just like magic of, wow, I can't believe all of this stuff and this new company. And and since then, scale trains has just continued to to blaze quite a trail. And brave enough to come out on Friday the 13th, too. He, <laughs> he'd no warning. Just go right for it. So uh, it seems like you've had some real. started the 14th, so we had no choice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a number, right? That's right. Um, and, you know, I, the one thing I wanted to ask first, because I, I, I know a lot of people probably know and, you know, remember you from your pre-scale trains days, but you are actually like in the the retail side or a, a hobby shop side of things way back weren't you can you tell us a little bit about your background on how you kind of got into the business well, I've, I've been into model rarity since i was a, a wee lad as they say i got a mark's train set probably when i was about four years old uh, moved into ho scale probably when i was about eight or nine did n scale when i was a young teenager uh, opened a hobby store, well, actually bought out a hobby store. My mom, I don't know how I convinced her, uh, when I was 15 and opened that when I was 16 Wow! and uh, did that for about five years, took a year off and sold insurance. Well, that was crazy. It earned my early twenties and then, uh, went to work for a company called hobby dynamics. Uh, they were a wholesale RC distributor back in the uh, late eighties, early nineties and, uh, horizon acquired hobby dynamics just about a year after, I started working there, went over, worked in wholesale sales, man, I worked everywhere. I helped in the warehouse purchasing, marketing, sales, you name it, held about every position you could imagine at Horizon. I was there 23 years. Wow. Uh, took over for John Ingstrom. A lot of folks who've been around a while know John uh, from the marketing side of the house. I actually was part of the team, though, in uh, 2000, good Lord, 2004, that helped acquire Atherton at Horizon. 2005 was the MDC Roundhouse acquisition, also McHenry. And uh, also uh, helped uh, bring the model railroad category to Horizon. I think that was in '96, uh, with uh, you know folks like Atlas and Cotto and Broadway and all those, um, and of course Athern. And then uh, in 2013, this idea kind of got hatched, and uh, we're, and by the uh, spring of 14, we were off to the races. Wow, that's incredible! And Scale Trains has. I mean, really set a new level. You know, when the company launched, you have museum quality as kind of specialty high end, the rivet mm-hmm. counter line, the operator line, and the kit classics line. So really serving, you know, four distinct and great segments in the hobby. And the releases that have come out are just uh, between the prototype selection of things I never thought we'd see as a ready to run, you know, plastic, highly detailed model to i love that i just built the mth four bay hopper that you've got now in your kit classics line in ho that i love doing those you know the basic kits and the price of those i pick those up all the time uh it's just it's amazing all the stuff that you've done in what less than 10 years Mm -hmm. with scale in in addition to you've moved the company from in tennessee which i can't imagine picking up and and moving but and you guys are spread out all over the place you're based in what cleveland tennessee Mm -hmm. but you know as as things work today just same as it is with the magazines i do for white river none of us have a desk across from each other that we're all over the country and i I know scale trains has a lot of that too with people working all over all around you know we we've been really blessed and, and thank you for that tony i really appreciate it now you talk about brands. We've actually uh, have two more brands now. We're going to we're inserting Fox Valley between uh, operator and rivet counter. Uh, Fox Valley is kind of going to be that bridge where there's uh, some prototype specific detail, but it's not nearly at the level of, of rivet counter. So you'll see some products like XMTH. Uh, some of the Fox Valley will live there. Some will go to rivet counter. Some will go um, to operator. But it'll give us a chance to do. Uh, what I'll, we'll call fallen flags on maybe some modern locomotives, take a rivet counter locomotive and bring it in. And maybe you do a, a Rio Grande ET44 um, 
you know, those are revenue generators. And it also gives us a chance to do short lines because the, the expense to create such specific detail for some of the short lines is impossible. So if we can get it 95, 98% of the way there, I think most folks would be happy with that. And then of course we've added the S helper brand as well. And it's kind of its own standalone brand, but uh, yeah, we've been really blessed. You know, we moved last year uh, from our location in Benton, Tennessee to the one in Cleveland. Uh, and it has just been amazing. Uh, the talent we've been able to retain and also to hire, you know, you couldn't do that here. Uh, I'm, I live literally right across the street from the old building and we're, we're pretty rural here and it's hard to attract and keep talent in a place where it's at least 30 minutes to, to the nearest grocery store and, and, uh, things like that. So that move was huge. And, uh, while we are pretty remote, we're really working on building the team in, in Tennessee. I think we've got about, I want to say 15 or so, um, in the office here in Tennessee. And then most of the folks that are spread out are product development. There's probably five or six folks, maybe a little more than that across the country, um, in PD, but, uh, I think a couple of those people will be moving in house within the next year or so. So yeah. we're really trying to get back and, and get as many folks uh, under under the tent as we can because you know working together and having that one on one FaceTime, while it's great to be able to do um, you know remote and be able to do things like we're doing today, we're we're on the internet together. There's nothing like being face to face. In fact, as we speak, Mike's in China right now wow. visiting the factory for the first time um, since 2019 and. He's probably made more progress in a week on a project than we've made in the last year, just because wow. there's that FaceTime. Yeah. And the changes in, in, you know, you mentioned the Fox Valley thing. That's one of the things just for those that maybe you're trying to keep a scorecard, I guess the first brand you picked up was some of the MTH tooling in both mm -hmm. HO and S 164th, which is a mind blower for a major company like y'all to, move into that category. So those came from MTH, Matt Gadensky's Fox Valley, which is mostly in, but there's some HO tooling in there as mm -hmm. well. Um, right. And then, and what the, and then kind of to step backwards, some of that MTHS was, you mentioned S helper. I think that's where some of that tooling originates. This that's is where right. that hobby history thing starts to get me right, that I feel like I'm Indiana Jones you know, looking through this, the archaeology of the hobby. And I like one of the things you're doing. And, and, and where was I? Scale uh, S helper into MTH, Fox Valley, uh, the exact rail pickup. Have I missed mm -hmm. anybody? Actually, you have because we haven't been very public. We uh, we recently acquired a major stake in virtual rail fan. Oh, wow. I love them. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, we we see a real opportunity to expand beyond our, you know, our current um, industry. You know, uh, VR is getting something like six hundred and fifty thousand unique views a month and almost ten million visitors. Wow. And uh, we see a real uh, synergy there to reach out to people who have an interest in model or in real trains and bring model railroading to them. So uh, that happened actually the week right after Exact Rail. So it's been a busy oh, wow. busy month. <laughs> Wow. That's, that's amazing. One of the things I wanted to ask on the incorporating of the different brands, like you're retaining the Fox Valley name, but mm -hmm. on a, like the MTH, some of the HO items went to kits and became kit classics. You right. mentioned you might do some non-prototypical like fantasy schemes under the Fox Valley brand that mm -hmm. would have been, I assume, scale trains toolings, but it looks like you're going to retain exact rail and its levels of signature platinum evolution. Now I'm forgetting the, the other, the four levels of exact rails product lines. Those are going to be retained and the name will stay as well. It's really to be determined yet. Um, um, we, the, you know, the hard thing is when you meld in brands, um, is making sure that you live up to your brand promises. So when you look at like the platinum line um, and you look at trucks, right? We have rotating bearing caps in the rivet counter line. Exact rail doesn't. Uh, you look at uh, using KD couplers versus our, um, our coupler. Uh, there's some things that we have to look at to see how can we bring that together. But, uh, you know, you kind of get you talking about that history lesson. We had our first discussions with Exact Rail back in 2020, hmm. and uh, we we came really close to the dance last year 
probably within a week of closing and, and things kind of fell apart there at the very last moment. Some, we ran into a, a roadblock and, uh, and then it came together and it came together really fast this last go around. Um, we had a, just a little discussion probably right around Springfield this year. Not really a, much came of it. And then at the end of April, um, they came back and we had some conversations and oh my goodness, we, by the beginning of May, we were full throttle <laughs> and uh, closed that thing in about five or six weeks. That is a record for us in, wow. in, in getting a deal done. Um, and so in that time frame, we were also negotiating the virtual rail fan opportunity. Wow. Uh, so my life was pretty busy plus some other things that were going on. And, uh, um, we haven't really had a chance to, to, to get deep into it yet. Um, you know, they, they went through the train life shutdown. That was, that had been going on for a bit. And then, uh, Chris Brimley's coming along, which is awesome. Chris is an incredible talent. Oh, he's um, a great guy. Yes. He, yeah. he, he's one that I kept bugging these last couple months. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's happening? You got any, I can't say anything. I can't say anything. <laughs> I'm really excited. That we all are excited to have Chris come on board, but you know, he's had a lot on his plate and he drove, actually drove, we have Pele's layout now. Um, yes. The, yeah. The sub. And so he drove that and, uh, all, uh, all the exact rail inventory and samples and just tons. Of, he drove a 26 bo- foot box truck from Utah to here. And, and then once he got back, um, there was quite a bit of tooling actually in Utah. And uh, he had to get that in a container to get it over to the factories. And then uh, he spent this last week uh, kind of, you know, doing the last touch ups of the where of the office and warehouse, making sure it was all cleaned out by yesterday. So, Chris has been pretty busy. He's worked his tail off though to kind of help get us where we are. I'm really impressed. We um, we have two projects. You know, we announced uh, the Inscale PS4427 at the Inscale convention a couple of weeks ago. Yet last night, the PCNF7633 uh, uh, appliance box appliance car. Box car. Yeah. And then uh, there are three more projects that we have already with decoration samples. So those will get announced one of each over the next three months. There are two more projects with deco samples in the works, and there are probably three or four more that are ready to have deco started. So I would look for an exact drill announcement almost once a month, every month for the foreseeable future. There's, wow. there's a lot to bring back to market and there's a lot of tooling um, that's been in Utah probably for 10 years or more that hasn't been run. And so, uh, we'll be getting a lot of that back into production. And there's even some things that have never been offered before um, that uh, that we'll get to market as time goes by. We just had, need some time to get our arms around everything. That's exciting. Yeah. You, you know, my dad, Terry Cook, he said that. Yeah. He goes, boy, some of that exact rail stuff, there's so many great things there. He said scale trains is, can basically run with that, just reissuing things, let alone the new stuff they'll bring out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah there, there are, uh, Chris and I were talking on a couple of projects over the years, uh, and I'm hoping to get back with him on a couple ideas I had there that we were working on. But, And it's it's such a great fit, because a lot of times when you see these acquisitions, other things like, okay, yeah, I can see those two merging, or yeah, that's that's good. But boy, this exact rail and scale trains is just like Cadillac and Lincoln going together. It's like, wow, the, the two greats are, that's amazing. So it, it's it's awesome to see. And then your regular scale trains line is hardly being forgotten. I'm thrilled to see oh, no. that you just announced the second release of the HO Jeep 30, which I believe is my cover for July. I think you saw that we reviewed three different of your Jeep 30, or actually four, if you count the two Union Pacifics, the A and the B. What a beautiful model. And it's one, both your SD45 and the Rivet Counter HO and this new HO Jeep 30. You know, Dad and I talk trains all the time. He says, you know, I don't like the scale trains Jeep 30 and I don't like the scale trains SD 45. I said, why? He said, I look at them and I think I didn't know this is what they really look like from all the models that have been out for years. This is what a Jeep 30 really looks like. And this is an, I says, I almost don't recognize them that I look at things. Well, I never knew it had this. I didn't know it should be like that. He said, they're, they're almost baffling to look at. I said, I know what you mean that. Yeah. It's like, Oh, from, you know, these are such familiar prototypes. And I think as modelers, we tend to get that feeling of, 
I, you kind of confuse the prototype with maybe an old blue box Atherin or somebody else's model. And then when something like yours comes out, it's like, wow, I, this is, you know, like that Jeep 30, the top of the cab roofs. I remember talking to Mike Hopkin and Paul Ellis about the different, those bands across the roof. It's like, what is that? And he said, that's what's really on there. I'm like, it is. It's like, well, I never knew that. That's amazing. And they're different across different production things. I mean, yeah, it's the the detail and things. It sets a new precedence. And it's always so neat to see that in the hobby where something comes out and it's so amazing that you know, like that, that Jeep 30B, I, I have a brass one from years back. So I kind of felt like, yeah, I have that. I know what it looks like. And then yours comes out and I bought that A and B Union Pacific set. And man, they are just, it's art. They're beautiful. Well, thank you, Tony. I, you know, that all that credit goes to Mike and, and Paul and the, and the PD team and, and the art team. And then there are, you know, our engineers and designers in China that we truly have a, I, I call it a dream team. Uh, there's a lot of talent here and, uh, and we've been really blessed with the eyes that those guys have. And in fact, we just had a, our first product development summit in April where we brought in and everybody from across the country. I think we're in, let's see, two, four, five, maybe six states now um, with PD. And uh, and that was the first time we've all been together. And, and it was a great opportunity. And we're actually rethinking the way we do product development. We threw everything against the wall and are reinventing ourselves um, to help bring to streamline, to make sure that we're utilizing each other as uh, we're calling them peer reviews more and uh, that we're uh, we're redoing how we do our archives all across the board so that we can become more efficient and bring product to market faster and still be as accurate and, and bring the quality. Uh, one of the things I know, one of the challenges since 2020 and COVID and the inflationary cycle that the whole world's economy is in right now. I know working with China has been almost prohibitive because you can't get over there. I don't know how many manufacturers have said, well, we used to go to China a couple times a year and, you know, for a while that was just not possible that I know that has been a real challenge for you all. And again, boy, it seems like every time I turn, I don't know how many times I go to the grocery store and go, man, I used to buy that, but man, I'm not going to pay that for a can or whatever. That mm -hmm. That's crazy. Uh, and, and in fact, one of the, I was surprised you just announced that beautiful thrall 86 foot high cube and you're even doing the early version and Wabash. And I have a couple of prototype pictures of that. And everybody knows those big auto parts, high cube cars, but, I don't think a lot of folks know they come out just ahead of the modernization business in like 66. Mm -hmm. They're out in 64. In fact, Drayton was saying to me the other day, hey, I was looking at some of your information and I didn't put it together that he was basically hinting what you, he said. I just did some stuff on high cubes and was using information that I found online that you had done. And it didn't occur to me like, you know, hey, maybe they're doing a high cube. So. Went right over my head, but anyhow, that yeah, that early high cube is a stunner. It's got the high brake wheel, tall ladders, roof walks on top, which they did at first for a few years, and some of them you know retained them, you know a little bit in the thing on the high cube though. When I looked at, it, I thought this is spectacular. It's a great car. There's six road names. I need the Wabash, the Santa Fe, the Frisco, the Rio Grande. I think the Southern and the Northwestern were the only two. I'm like, eh, you know, but man, I got to buy four of these. I bet they're going to be $75, $80, which is fine. They're really cool. $51.99? Really? And it's a rivet it, counter? Well, you know, Tony, it, it, it is interesting to hear you say that, too, because if, if you look at that PCNF 7633 that we just announced yesterday, um, Xactrail had planned to be out at $55 on that car. And we're right around $48, maybe $47. So we're about $8 or so less. One of the things, you know, you talk about being innovative. We've really been on the on the edge, leading edge for manufacturers when it comes to locomotives being sold direct. Uh, you know, folks have done freight cars for years, and that direct model is what really allows us to do a blended margin. So about 70% of our business is direct to the consumer, about 30% through retailers. And it's that it's that blended margin coming from the consumer side that allows us to be a little more aggressive on our price. Um, and, you know, it, and it, it does affect margin. I mean, we could probably make a little bit more margin on it 
but we have the philosophy we would rather um, sell through and make more uh, rather than having a warehouse full of unsold inventory. So for us, you know, we can always make more. And as long as we're hitting our, the numbers that we need for our minimums, which is no problem, um, we'll just come back and, and just continue to make them. Even like the G30, it only went up $5. Um, you know, on non-sound, ten dollars on on DCC and sound because decoder prices have gone up. But we've really tried to hold the line in, in that under three hundred dollar price point for a DCC and sound locomotive. And yep, yeah, back to China and the inflation stuff. Is that correct? Are those probably two of the biggest foes you're having to fight as far as making things work and staying yeah, where you want to be? Really- it's really shifted, you know, it's really crazy during um, COVID containers door to door, you know, pre COVID we were spending about five to $7,000 for a container. We're getting down to those levels again, thank goodness. But if you think about it, we've announced a product, we've taken pre-orders, it's now time to ship. And the shipping company goes back and they're gonna, they say, oh, it's gonna be 30,000 door to door. You know, you're, you're five times, four or five times what your anticipated landed cost was. So we ate a lot of that at that time. And in those times, we were actually seeing double digit uh, price increases. So we ate a lot on the margin side through COVID. Um, we have been having to make some of that back up at, in the last year. You've, pro- you've seen a, we've been a little bit more, oh, probably a little higher than we would want to be. But uh, we are definitely taking a lower margin to be able to pass that along. And uh because, you know, several of us on our team are modelers. You mentioned Drayton, you mentioned Paul, uh, and then there's plenty more on our team that are modelers, whether they're in product development or marketing or sales or you name the department. And, uh, you know, and I, and I listen to those guys too, and, and they talk about the pain of wanting to buy product and, and things that they really would want to have. And, and, and we hear it from the customer. Uh, you know, there were some pretty – Pretty rough uh, correspondence last night from some folks that weren't really happy with the prices on the G30. And it's like, you know, we, unfortunately, it's a business. Fortunately, unfortunately, it depends how you look at it. It's a business and we have to make money. And, and it's that money that, that allows us to invest in new things like the, the high cube box car or buy a building that's the size that we need to be able to grow and continue or, or acquire companies or invest in companies or whatever it is that that requires profit. And unfortunately these days it seems like profit's a dirty word, but that's what makes the world go around and you have to have it. And, and uh, you know, some people believe we're fat cats living in the mansion on the hill. <laughs> I wish that was true, but <laughs> this industry is a labor of love and, and that's okay. Love what I do. Wouldn't trade it for anything. And, and uh, glad we're here. I think, yeah, I, uh, in anything, whether it's like magazines that I do or the stuff that, you know, you do. Yeah. It, everybody tends to be, I'm in it because I, this is what I like to do, that it was my thing and it turned into a job. And yeah, yep. it is, it gets a labor of love. Speaking of a big giant mansion, you've, you've not even, you've basically been homeless traveling the country in a Winnebago for the last couple of, tell me about this road trip. I remember when you first propositioned this saying, Hey, we're going to do this. And I thought, this is crazy. There's no way he can do that and run a company. It's It's been going on now, what, at least a year, hasn't it? A year and a half? Oh, no. We started uh, in the fall of 21. So oh. it's now uh, almost going to be two years this year. Um, you know, Tony, it's funny. I wish you would have spoke some common sense into me back then. <laughs> no, not really. We, uh, it, it's really become more than we ever dreamed it would be. So I've always I've had this vision for years and COVID is what really brought the opportunity because we weren't traveling. We saved a ton of money on trade shows and travel and all those things. So we took that money and we invested it in a in a pickup truck and a fifth wheel RV and, and uh, started hitting the road. We actually Labor Day of, of uh, 21 was our first event that weekend. And uh, we've now um, by the time we finish up the one we're starting this summer. We'll be just over half the country. I'll have pretty much everything done east of the Mississippi except two states. Wow. But the amazing thing is when we started this, you know, it was crazy. You want to talk about crazy. I we, The original idea was 50 states in 50 weeks. And then I looked at the logistics and I said, <laughs> you lost your mind. And, uh, yeah. and so we said, well, we'll do it over maybe two years. Well, the thing is, you know, if you're going to take the time to go to drive all the way out to Washington State, man, you're going to see as many places as you can and visit as many uh, clubs and, as you can and do some research and, and those things. 
and it really mushroomed. We thought we would do between all 50 states, maybe a 75 to 100 dates uh, for meet and greets. And that's our meet and greet presentation and, and doing visits too. We visit clubs. I mean, we don't do a meet and greet. We'll go visit. We go to some museums. There's all, all kinds of things we've done. And when we wrap up this summer, we'll be just shy of 100 meet and greets. Uh, I think by the time this whole thing is said and done, we'll have visited 200 plus clubs and done 200 wow. meet and greets. Wow. And it's it, it's that chance to meet folks one on one where they are. You know, we do. You, you've been to a lot of major shows. You've done Train Fest. You've done Springfield. You know, done some of the WGHs. Well, those shows are never going to come to uh, you know uh, Boise, Idaho, or you know, you name it. Uh, just. The, the regions aren't that large to be able to support a show like that. So this allows us to go places that we would never go and, uh, and meet people and, and let them. One of the things that's really important to us and has been since the very beginning is we want people to know we're real people. We're not some nameless, faceless company that we're unapproachable and you have no idea who the leadership or the ownership is or the people that work there. We just want to be your friend and, and the company that loves to make your model trains and, and spend time with you when we're together. Well, then it's grown from that, you know, because I liken that too, by the way, to like throwing a rock in the pond. So the average meet and greet has about 25 to 40 attendees. It can be more, it can be less. We've had as many as 100. And, I, you know, you, you share your, we share our story, how we got started, where we are today, some of the adversities we've overcome. Um, we show how model trains are made, take a trip to the factory and, and through the whole product development process. We do a Q&A session. We run trains on the railroad. And then you have that one-on-one -on -one time with people and they, and they tell their friends and, and you built, uh, you know, you built an ambassador for your brand. Well, then beyond that, the thing that we really didn't realize would be so huge is the opportunity to meet people who have prototype information, uh, wow. slide collections, research materials, access to the prototype. You know, we had in one instance, we were down in Florida and doing one in, in Tampa uh, or I'm, no, I was a little further south. That was in Fort Myers. And this guy comes up afterwards and he's talking to me. And he says, well, what do you got planned in the morning? And I said, well, we have to be in Miami tomorrow evening, but we don't have any, you know, anything hard on the schedule for tomorrow. And he says, well, I own the Seminole Gulf Railroad. Would you like a tour? And it's like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we can do that. But, you know, it's those kind of things that open up and suddenly you've got access to prototype information that you've never had before. Wow. And, uh, and then it's... Um, there's so much more than that too. And, and, you know, we had a chance to go down and, and spend some time on the white river ranch. That was pretty incredible. Uh, oh, that's right. You know, and I just, I can't remember, you know, I split my time between Katy, Texas here in the Houston areas where I'm at today. And then, you know, my place up North of Kansas city, yeah. I'm back and forth. And I, I stay down here to work the archive stuff at white river and yeah kevin you daily had mentioned that he said oh hey you know shane wilson was here they brought their camper and all that stuff as hasn't kevin got what do you think of his office there with the uh, gun safes full of slides that's that's oh, where my. i i go to spend a couple of days of doing nothing but what was it paul ellis was asking me about what is it mike hopkins looking for let me see if i can find those pictures isn't that amazing hey. oh it's unbelievable Unbelievable. Yeah. And he was showing you guys his photo server too. Holy smokes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing. Awesome. awesome stuff. They really enjoyed your visit. Yeah, I keep waiting for him, ready to come to Plattsburgh. You know, I think, well, I'll just get some hot dogs, hamburgers. They need to pull up in my driveway, you know, and have a <laughs> scale trains event. And of course, it's only a town of 2000. But, you know, I do have like a couple Model Railroad News subscribers in Plattsburgh. I remember seeing that on the list one time. And it's people, I don't even, it's like, wow, that's something. But, that's cool. So yeah, there's yeah. trained people everywhere. You never know. Yeah. Now your and next your next run, we're uh, this show I think will come out right around the fourth of July or before. So we'll actually be seeing each other Saturday, July the eighth, at mm -hmm. the great uh, Spring Creek Model Trains in Deschler, Nebraska. Speaking of small towns. Uh, yep. that they're having their every other year open house. So is that the, the only trip you're making with the RV this summer or you have more stops? Oh no, we're, that's just, that's just the first of many. So we start out uh, there in Nebraska. Uh, we'll do the show. We're actually going to do the meet and greet presentation. So folks who are coming to the show at three 30 on Saturday at the library, if you're, yeah, there's an opportunity to come and see what we do during a meet and greet. And then from there we've got, uh, we go to Lincoln and then over to uh, Grand Island. And then the next weekend, we'll actually be at Greeley at the Colorado Model Railroad Museum for a oh. day-long event. 
And then that evening we'll do a meet and greet. And uh, if folks uh, hear the podcast, and they want to come to Greeley on during the normal business hours for the, for the uh, museum. If you mention bear, that's our dog who travels with us. You can get free admission uh, during the day. And then of course the meet and greets free. And then we head off to Vegas for an event the following weekend uh, with the Nevada State Railroad Museum. And of course, we did, documented the GP30 there. So we'll be on board to one of their passenger cars doing a meet and greet. And for folks who are in that area or coming up from LA, uh, Mike, Joe, Paul, and uh, Mike's wife and Joe's wife will be there as well. So it'll be the first time the founders and all the wives have been together in years. So it's an opportunity to come meet all of us. And then we head up to uh, Carson City and then Sacramento. San Francisco, work our way all the way down through California, down to L.A., San Diego, over to Phoenix, uh, Tucson, then the National Train Show in uh, Dallas. And then if you come to the Nationals, we uh, the RV is actually going to be in the building. Ah. It'll be the backdrop for our booth, and we're going to set oh, up a wow. campsite with a campfire. I'm going to cook some more <laughs> and all that good stuff. And oh, then uh, Memphis and home. So we'll leave wow. July 5th, and we'll be back the week after uh, Labor Day. So another monster trip, but that'll wrap up pretty much the whole Western United States. That's incredible. And you know, Ray, the thing, one of the things I really like about this is Shane takes his dog with him. Cause yeah. you know, I have banded is in tow every place <laughs> I go. You know, if I go rail fanning, that dog is there in the back of the link in some place. So yeah, it's, I think that's so awesome. That's just She's amazing. She's right here on the floor next to me. <laughs> yeah, I got, I have both bandits here and uh, my friend Pamela's dog chocolates here as well. Yeah, they hang out with me all day. You know, I, it's it's awesome. It, it, again, that's when you talk about their hobbyists, they're real people, you know, the that they're friends of everybody in the hobby. And yeah, Shane is that's he really is real guy real deal and like doing this trip and getting to go out and meet him and do all that stuff is just amazing well we don't want to keep you forever because i know you got all you're packing and doing a lot of stuff today but as we kind of wrap up i wanted to ask what would you tell yourself eight years ago as you were starting scale trains now that you've been doing it for about a decade what things do you see if anything that surprised you or wow I wish I'd have known because this would have been like, what What kind of things have you learned that have been surprises of, wow, I don't know that I expected that, but that's neat. <laughs> well, you would think the four guys that started this company with like 135 years of experience in the hobby and the industry at that point would have a clue what they were doing. Uh, they had no idea. <laughs> um, man, there was so much to learn. Um, you know, we had people who could book containers. Well, I had no idea how to book a container in the early days. You name all the things that we had to learn. And I think the other thing that that has shocked me is how much cash it takes for this industry. You know, to cash flow your business is one of the hardest things I ever could have imagined. Um, to be able to continue investing in new product and and you know, hiring employees or team members. And that part of it kind of blew me away as well. And I think the other big lesson, and I say this a lot, is we should have hired a lot sooner. You know, when, when you're first getting going, you take on a lot your, yourself because, you know, finances are tough and, and you're, you're stretching to make the ends meet, but you spread yourself too thin. And uh, if I had a do-over, I think we would have hired a lot faster and we would have it would have helped us grow uh, more rapidly and taken a lot of the pressure off some of us uh, to and spread that out because today the talent that we have is absolutely amazing. I, I can't believe the people that work for us from sales to marketing to product development to the warehouse to you name it. I don't want I don't want to miss anyone, but um, it takes a team. It really takes an awesome team, folks that. You know, you talk about the road trip. There's no way on God's green earth we could leave for nine weeks if I didn't have a guy in our operations manager, Bruce, that I trust 110 percent to run our day to day business and a team that that loves and respects him and, and works well with him and and loves our company and who will do whatever it takes to get the job done. There's no way we could do this because you have to have those people. You know, I, I joke all the time. This is my second full time job and we're on the road. And it's true. And and. But having those people makes me sleep well at night, knowing that the business is in good hands. Just amazing. You know, and I could have helped you on that money thing. I think it was <laughs> Nat Polk that ages ago said, how do you make a small fortune in model railroading? You start with a large fortune. We proved that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, so can you tease us at all here? Because I can't believe you've just announced Jeep 30s. You've got new Exact Rail products that Thrall High Cube. I'm so excited about. But the NMRA show is coming up in mid August. Mm-hmm. Certainly, you're going to have some surprises for me, aren't you? Look for and and you know things do change when I say this, um, but I'm very confident that the next museum quality locomotive will be there. Um, the we should have an all new N scale locomotive uh, ready to go there, and um, that will probably be it for all new tooling at that show. Uh, but I, we should announce. And it'll probably be early next year, but there's, there, I looked the other day, not including like what we're doing on the MTH side of the house, we're bringing that tooling back or the Fox Valley tooling or the exact rail. We have like 30 projects in play right now um, for the next few years, in some form of either announced or all the way back into the research phase somewhere along the, the pipeline. So there's plenty of new product uh, coming Wow. Okay. Now I'm not going to sleep tonight trying to decide what is that museum quality release that's coming up, man. I think it's going to be unexpected. I think Tony should make a list of what he thinks it is, and then we'll see in Texas if he's right. (laughs) If he's correct. Let's see if he can guess it. Well, if Tony gets it right, I'll buy dinner. If Tony doesn't get it right, he buys me dinner in Texas. (laughs) There you go. There's the bet. Happy to do that by a big steak or barbecue. Man, there's nothing but good eating down here. In fact, my assistant editor, Shane Mason, always says, I think half the reason you go down there is not to get away from Kansas City winners, not to work at the slide collection of the U Dailies. You go down to Texas to eat. I said, well, there is some some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put in my final request here again. When are you going to buy the Tyco tooling and let me run that and make train sets for you? <laughs> and if we could find that Tyco tooling, I would love to. Seriously, I you know it's a I don't you probably can't see it, but I have a whole stack of Tyco over here on my shelving unit. Um, I would love that. I think that'd be awesome. But it kind of got spread to the four winds, and then I'm afraid so. Just gone. Yeah, I've said that to him before, Ray. I know you think that's a joke, but that's yeah that that's the the level I want to run at scale trains is the train set level and make you know, starter train sets for folks because boy we we need that and I know price wise it would be a challenge, but if well, anybody can do it, I think they could. Well, Tony, you know, I'll give you a little foreshadowing. Um, it sure makes sense to come with a train set when you can market to hundreds of thousands of people who aren't in your industry. Yes. And yeah. that was one of the big reasons for this most recent acquisition. Wow. And it was. I mean, when you look at, you, you know, people can knock the quality and such that Tyco had. But when you think of back in the day, you could walk into a Woolco, a Sears, a Kmart, and there was a stack of Chattanooga Choo Choo sets. In fact, Ray, that's where you started. And I've got, there's a lot of, a lot of folks yeah. in the industry will confide to me and say, oh, this, like the Tyco Silver Streak set in the late seventies was my first train set. I mean, that's what got a lot of the movers, shakers, the people in the hobby today making this top notch stuff. That was how they got into the hobby. So, you know, that's. I that's, did. I had a lot of it as a kid. Yeah, that's and then, you know, I think that's where, and, and we're looking at some things and, and there will be, um, and, and look for us and it'll give you another little peek inside the door with the, the VR acquisition, uh, virtual rail fan, look for some things that are way outside the box, um, in our world that aren't, they're train related, but it's not model railroading. And, uh, we're really going to push the envelope to try and expand our world. And when I say our world, not just the scale trains world, but the model railroad world, well beyond where it's at now and reach an audience that uh, that we're just not reaching right now. They're innovative scale trains. Did I not say that at the beginning of this show, Ray? You sure did. And you boy, I, I, I'm, I'm just thinking that uh, scale trains is going to definitely make sure you stay busy, not with Tyco stuff, but you're going to be <laughs> writing a lot of articles uh, based on all the things that scale trains has got coming to us. So. As, as yeah. always, in scale and trains... I uh, you know, Tony, I, I, you've been a you've been an advocate for us since the very beginning, and and, and a great partner. And the coverage that you've given us in, in Model Railroad News has been incredible. And thank you doesn't begin to even say how much we appreciate what you've done for us to help us grow our business. 
it's you know the stuff you guys make as i say i you know i'm a fan like like you got like most of your team is so you open those boxes and it's like holy smokes look at this a jeep 30 and a jeep 30b you know i mean i'm like a little kid so yeah it's it's not work or it's not you know hyperbole it is like wow this is so cool but yeah i get crazy excited on it so really awesome love that love it when it's christmas morning yeah and it always is all the time boy in the hobby the stuff that's been delivered in the last year the announcements yeah every day seems to be christmas lately scaletrains.com is a place to go and the exact rail the existing inventory that was selling from exact rail is now available over at scale trains the ho and in scale products their new products will be sold there too you can see all those new releases and the road trip information is on the website too right shane so people right, can yeah. see the app yeah. The dates. And of course, top of the, uh, top, very top of the homepage, it says road trip. Just click on it. And all the dates are there. And of course, follow social media that although, you know, I'm going to try to get Drayton to do this rock and roll podcast with me. So he's going to be extra busy. But, you know, I know <laughs> he still does a lot of stuff for you guys. But man, Shane, I'm uh, so excited as always to get to talk to you. Uh, you've been a friend for more than a decade. And what you're doing for the hobby is just spectacular. I mean, Ray, what do you think getting to visit this long with Shane today? What neat stuff, huh? I have said before about scale trains. I've, I've had exposure to scale trains uh, product line. Uh, the, the term you use, Cadillac, is, is very appropriate as a parallel. Thank you. Uh, feel touch of a scale trains product. You can definitely, you know that there's quality. Uh, I've had the opportunity to run scale trains products. I'm really excited to start seeing some four axle stuff that gives me hope for the future oh. uh, with scale trains and, and the direction you're running. Next I've already four s- in development, right? Nice, nice. So I keep submitting my requests. I'm sure thousands of people continue to submit their requests when they see you on the road trips and at Amherst and uh, everything else. So uh, yeah, really uh, looking forward to seeing the future of scale trains with all these acquisitions and then seeing what you're doing outside the box is going to be really cool. Thank you. Well, safe travel, Shane, and I'll see you Saturday in Nebraska on July 8th for the Spring Creek open house, springcreekmodeltrains.com. You can look that up to get information on it. And see wonderful Deshaun, Nebraska, and then follow scale trains around the country. They're heading out west and then back around here to the southwest, and they'll be in the Dallas area for the NMRA show in mid August. And a new museum quality locomotive on the way. Man, I had things to do today. Now I'm going to be sitting here with a pad writing down, well, no, maybe not. Well, I wonder if they, well, hmm. I don't know. Now I've, now I've, my whole day's been ruined. I'm going to sit here all day stewing over this. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for having me and thank you so much for what you do for our hobby and, our, and, and what we love right and really do appreciate your time and, and uh, giving us the opportunity to visit with you and share our story thank you for joining us for this episode of around the layout learn more about today's show on our facebook page facebook.com backslash around the layout show your support by becoming an operating crew member at patreon.com backslash around the layout podcast past episodes and more can be found on our website around the layout.com and send us your feedback around the layout at gmail.com thanks for hanging out with us around the layout